Hey, what's up Bears, Eric here. I wanna start off by saying happy Pride Month, June 2023. It's hard to believe we are halfway through Pride Month. It's the 16th and it has been a wild Pride this year. I mean, just so much stuff happening. Lots and lots of stuff happening. And that's kind of why I wanted to make this video. I've got three different things I wanna talk about today. Um, but before we get into that, I wanna say, you know, hopefully everybody's out there being their true selves, expressing themselves 100% every single day, but also being safe and, uh, you know, being there for each other with everything that's happening. It's really rough right now, but I want you to know, I got your back. A lot of other people have your back and we will get through this as a community. I promise you, trust me, I have been fighting pretty much my entire life and this is not uncharted territory. It's just another bump in the road as we keep moving through life. So um, just stay strong out there, okay? So what I wanna talk about today is there's three things specifically I wanna cover, and there's a reason why I'm showing Eric July on the screen here, because I believe that what he's doing right now covers all three of those things uh, pretty evenly, I believe. And the first is something we're seeing a lot in the bigotry space right now, which is virtue signaling. There's a lot of virtue signaling going on. And this is something they accuse uh, progressives of doing, but they're doing a lot of it right now. It's, it's basically, the entire platform that they're on is just one big virtue signal at the moment. And um, we're seeing a lot of that. We're also seeing a lot of astroturfing, which is establishing a market for things by providing like all of these issues and then running with those issues for so long that you condition people to believe that all of these things exist. And then you can start to navigate that space by astroturfing it. And then we have problem centric selling, which is, we're seeing that everywhere. We're seeing it all over the place. Um, and we'll talk more about what prob pro problem-centric selling is when we get there. Look, I've already watched Eric July's video. Like I said, I'm no longer gonna be platforming these guys. So I'm not gonna be showing the video here. I've already watched it, but we're gonna read because he loves to promo his videos. So he basically tells you exactly what he's gonna talk about in the video in his promo. And um, to be honest, to, to get my point across, I don't really need to um, show any clips of this video. So here he goes, Eric July, and he's showing a picture of Midnighter, uh, Apollo and Midnighter here, uh, a couple that has been a gay couple um, in DC for quite a long time, but all of a sudden now it's a problem. All of a sudden now it's an issue. Now it's an issue, right? He says this, there is a bizarre hyperfixation now in entertainment on sexuality with regards to children. DC makes a post on their official Twitter with a quote calling out bigots and aimed at the kids who need it. Check out the full video in live. No, we're not going to check out the full video. Here's the post in question. I'm going to read this to you and then I'm going to give you my perspective on this. So DC posted this and um, Apollo and Midnighter or Midnighter and Apollo, however you want to say it. Um, they're going to be part of the authority movie that's coming out in the DCU. So DC uh, has a reason to continue supporting these characters outside of it just being Pride Month. We're going to see a lot of these characters from the Authority over the next couple of years, I'm going to assume. So it says, let the world, let the whole world know the bigots, the cowards, and the kids who need it. Show them that our love is real. Show them that it's powerful. We'll never back down and we're not afraid of fighting back. Now, here's the thing. Let's not play stupid here. We're not going to play stupid. I'm not going to challenge anybody's intelligence here. Let's be honest, if you grew up in the era I grew up in with comics, which is the 80s and especially the 90s, women were hypersexualized all the time, all the time. Can we talk about like the way great artists like Jim Lee drew women in comics? Um, Todd McFarlane, you could pretty much name any comic book artist from that era, and they were most likely drawing hypersexualized women on the covers of comic books and thongs, basically wearing almost nothing when it comes to a bra or a swimsuit. It was plastered all over the place. And that kind of sexuality was everywhere in comic books. But for some reason, this is an issue. For some reason, this is a problem for them. And that is a virtue signal. It's a virtue signal because they are telling you that this is an issue, but all the other sexualization in comic books is not because they'll never talk about that. Matter of fact, a lot of the people in the space, in the bigotry space, in the phobia space, want comics to go back to the 90s. They argue for the hyper-sexualization of women in comic books. That's what they want. So to come out and say that, that that's okay, but then this isn't, is a virtue signal. It's, it's fake. Also, this concept that that kids, like automatically you hear the term kids and they want you to think about like, go as young as you can possibly go. Look, I was a gay kid. 
I was a gay teenager. And that destroys their entire narrative, which is why they don't ever want to listen to people who were gay tell them that they, about their experience, especially people my age, because I wasn't, I didn't have all of this content around me. Matter of fact, I was dealing with coded characters back in the eighties and nineties and being in my face was, was thrown like hypersexualized women. So if throwing hypersexualized women in my face as a gay kid didn't make me straight, then stuff like this isn't going to do anything to straight kids. So it's it's all it's all this it's all a scam. It's all fake. It's all a virtue signal. Because it's not real. It's an illusion they're creating. Which is brings me it brings me to my next point, which is astroturfing. They've been spending a lot of time, maybe the last two or three months, maybe maybe even longer than that, sort of waiting, building up to Pride Month, in a sense, establishing that there are all these things going on that you need to be aware of. Because something is being kept from you. Something, something is hiding. There's, there's something going on. You just have to be in the know. You have to know about it. And that was them sort of laying the groundwork for everything that we're seeing now. And this is something that creators like Eric July have been doing with all of their anti-gay, anti-trans content building up to Pride Month. And so it's no surprise to me that they're going to continue to, during Pride Month, pick on everything that is queer. Because it's bigoted. It's homophobic. It's transphobic. This is this is this is who they are. I always say believe people when they tell you who they are. And someone who has a pattern, a dynamic where this is the kind of content they make, but they never say anything positive about it, chances are that's how they feel about it. So whether someone is actually a bigot or they're just spreading bigoted content, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. The end result is going to be the same. So for me, I feel like, you know, this is what they're going to put out, the astroturfing, all of that. Now let's get into kind of the one thing that, uh, that bugs me a little bit, and that is the problem-centric selling. So you got the virtue signaling that happened, you have the astroturfing, and then that leads you into the problem-centric selling. Now problem-centric selling isn't new. It's not something that just popped up out of nowhere. But it really depends on how you do it. It, de it depends on how you're conducting your business in terms of problem centric selling. So here, this is an example, and this is only one of them. There's more. James Gunn said he'd hate to write modern comic books because no one is reading them anymore. The rip can't relate to this. No one wants to read bad comics. Check out the full, we're not checking out the full video. I've already watched it. We're not going to watch it here. So he's telling you, Hey, this is the problem. And I'm selling you the solution, right? That, that is what he is doing. It's what he's been doing a lot of. There's plenty of examples of it on his Twitter. I don't think it's any big secret that this is how he's been running through with the Ripperverse. Even his video where he talked about the upcoming uh, pre-sale campaign, whatever you want to call it. Uh, he talked about detractors and haters and, and this, that, and the other. It's problem-centric selling. It's not a new thing, but it's creating a problem so they can sell you a solution. And again, that's not necessarily inherently a bad thing. But when you're doing that on the backs of marginalized communities, when you're doing that and you're dogpiling on groups that are already being oppressed, already being harassed, already being attacked, when your business model is, hey, we're gonna step on people that are already being stepped on, say that they are the problem, and then I'm going to sell you a solution to that problem, which is non-visibility, we're not gonna give any time or attention to any of these marginalized communities, then they are creating a problem and selling you a solution. And you just need to be aware of that. You need to be aware that that is what is happening because this is not a problem. There's no problem in offering content for queer people and queer teenagers. I was a queer kid myself. I'm talking anecdotally from my own experience. And I would have loved to have this kind of representation when I was growing up, but I grew up in the era of comics code. The comics code only allowed them to allude to people's personal lives. Unless they were a puranical, heteronormative relationship, you didn't get to see it. So I am thankful for DC for doing this and offering this. For all of the other queer kids out there, like me, who felt this way growing up and did not have proper representation. We get crumbs of characters. Apollo and Midnighter are two characters in a sea of heterosexual characters. So spare me the virtue signaling, spare me the astroturfing, and definitely spare me the problem-centric selling because I don't buy into it. We see it with Bud Light. Now there's anti-woke beer. 
We saw it with coffee. Now there's anti-woke coffee, anti-woke chocolate. It is creating a problem to sell you a solution. Because here's the thing, if you don't wanna buy the other stuff, you don't have to buy it. But insisting that somehow it's a problem and then offering a solution for that um, while stepping on uh, marginalized and minority groups is an issue. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Um, again, happy Pride Month. Everybody's being safe, having a good time out there. And just be aware of what's going on uh, in your surroundings and know what you're buying into before you buy it. You can spend your money however you want. I'm not telling you to not buy the comic if you don't want to buy it. Just be aware of what the folks in that space are doing. All right, take care.